Hey guys, Andy here at MVP Java. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about how to test our JavaFX applications with TestFX4. Now, TestFX4 is actually still in alpha version, uh, but not to worry. Uh, by the end of this year, they say the beta uh, version should be out. So most of the things that I'm going to be covering in this example will definitely be still uh, in there. Uh, they're pretty much core features. So what is TestFX? Test FX is all about interaction testing. So if you want to see how your GUI uh, interacts with the user and has the expected outcome, clicking this, moving this, dragging this, double click, all that kind of stuff, then you can automate all that. All right. So the big difference is uh, over it and Test FX3, which has been out for um, a lot longer than Test FX4, is that it's much more in line with the way that um, JavaFX is bootstrapped, let's say. So, you know, have like the init or start or stop method or something like that. And uh, also, it uh, is not tied to a testing framework. For example, JUnit, you can have other testing frameworks. They developed a really cool uh, node query API that we're going to take a look at at a high level and also headless mode which is a big deal especially in continuous integration environments you really want to cut down on the amount of time that this GUI testing um, takes because out of all the testing it's the one usually that takes the longest right and um, it takes advantage of Java 8 so Java 8 we're talking about lambdas right lambda is a big deal in GUI programming so Let's take a look at an example that deals with a single scene example. All right. Now, this is an example that we've seen in my other uh, tutorials. So uh, I refer to those other tutorials, specifically Spring Boot with JavaFX. And the other one was um, JavaFX with multiple controllers. OK, so I'm going to be using that example, but just throwing test effects in the mix. So I'll put those links as annotations for you. We first need to uh, take a look at the dependencies, which is very simple in the palm.xml file, these are the two dependencies that you need, right? So you need the core over here and you need the JUnit test effect. So they're both in 4.0.4. Um, this is the latest one since the, uh, I believe the end of March, 2016. So really at this point in time of this tutorial, there was nothing and there's nothing you know, newer than that or else I would have taken it. So taking a look at um, the project structure, it's exactly the same as the other uh, tutorials that I've covered. So let's take a look at the main. This is actually from uh, JavaFX, okay? And this is where I bootstrap uh, Spring Boot with JavaFX and all that. The big difference that I did in here, right? So if you take a look at those other tutorials, you'll notice that this, this method is actually different. I'm using a Spring Application Builder instead of um, the context directly. And one thing that I do, which is very important, is I set the headless mode to false, okay? If you don't do this, especially if you've been following my tutorials, is that you're gonna get a, a basically a headless exception. So if you're gonna have, it actually work if you run, I believe it's just one test, but if you're gonna start running multiple tests, which is obviously what you're gonna do, then you're gonna get this exception. It's gonna be very uh, time consuming to try to fix it, especially if you want to use Spring and JavaFX and TestFX. This is how you would do it through, um, through the Spring application builder, okay? That's all you have to do. And now your TestFX stuff will work with all these multiple tests. Now, I have an abstract class that all my tests are gonna inherit from, and it extends application tests. So that comes from test effects over here. And it basically, if you take a look at the source code, it extends um, a class called FX robot. So FX robot is a fluent API. So it always returns an FX robot. And you can change the, you can chain the, um, your method calls so that you can click and move and write and all this kind of stuff, interaction testing with the GUI. And the other thing it does is it implements an application fixture interface. So you get the init, the start, the stop methods, which again are much more in line with how things are done in Java effects. So over here I've got my before in JUnit, I got my after, and I have my override of my start method, which comes again from the application test, uh, which implements the application fixture interface. All right, so here this looks very much like a Java FX application. You take get the stage, it's the primary stage that uh, the super class will store for you, and you just show it. And your setup class before every test, again, this is very similar to the way you do it in JavaFX. In JavaFX, you would say application.launch, right? In this case, it's just application test.launch. And the code in the background checks that this guy here, which is basically my, my application, is um, 
extends the JavaFX application. So let's actually look at the application itself, okay? Just to give you a heads up. It's the same one we've been covering in the other tutorials. It's the NASA mission database. You click on one of these missions and you get an update in the text. And also when you click on one, the logger updates that it successfully retrieved the mission info, okay? So what I wanna test is I'm gonna do three tests. One, that this list here has three missions. Two, that when you click on it, it updates this area. And I'm gonna take a look at some of the text. So for example, if I click on Skylab, I'm gonna just check that you know the word Skylab is in here, okay? And also, I'm also gonna check, let's say if I click on Apollo, that in the logger, it updates with this message over here. So those are the three tests that I'm gonna do, all right? Again, if you wanna know how to build that GUI and everything, take a look at the other tutorials. So I've done the setup. I've done the, the showing at the start. Now, after each test, it's very important to kind of get rid of the window, okay? So FX Toolkit, which comes from TestFX, will hide the stage so that after it'll be reshown, okay, for the next one. And it'll release all events that have to deal with any keys that you pressed or any mouse events, because if you don't do that, they can get stuck and it could actually influence other tests, all right? Think of this as resource management. And I also have a find method in here. If you want to find, um, let's say, a JavaFX component by uh, FX ID, okay? And I'm using the node query API here. I'm looking, I'm using the lookup. And the lookup is using my query string and it's going to get basically an iterator which I just get the first one uh, that it hits on. Actually, um, at the time of this writing, uh, the first version of this tutorial was using the 4.04 alpha version and I was using there was a, a method called query first when you do your lookup and when I updated to 4.04 it wasn't there anymore so I had to go about doing it this way but just to let you know that we're still in the alpha version so there will be little things that like this are, are gonna they're gonna creep up for sure but it's still worth um, your while to learn and get up to speed with it because it is really the next version that is going to be taking over and it is a great version at that, okay? The one big downfall right now with TestFX4 is the lack of documentation and uh, Java docs in general. Unfortunately, uh, that is the case right now, but I'm hoping that'll be changing with the beta version coming out. So let's go and test those three uh, test cases that I, I, uh, I wanted to test while I was demoing the application. So here you go, missions, tab test i'm extending the base class we just went through and i made some of these uh, fx ids uh, some string constants here in the code so if you want to use an fx id in your um, in your lookups or through this custom find method that i've done uh, to be used in a node query method or the node um, query pi then you'll have to put a hash in front of it okay if you put a dot in front of it, it's actually a CSS selector. So the name of a CSS class, which I'm not showcasing here, but you can use that, it's pretty cool. And you can also not put a dot or not put a, um, a pound and just put a string. And what that'll do is it'll actually be the text of whatever component uh, is labeled on it. So if you have, let's say the Apollo mission, right in the list box, you can just say click on Apollo and it'll actually find it. So there's, there's kind of three ways to do it there. So first test is I'm gonna use the click on method that I've inherited from um, the base class, basically the FX robot from the application test uh, base class. And uh, this um, FX ID does not exist, okay? So again, just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page, I'm talking about the FX IDs that you're gonna find um, in your, uh, for example, if I go to my console, or I should have pressed, edit, not uh, double click, right? I'm talking about these uh, FX IDs over here, okay? So uh, let me just close the um, scene builder because I had double clicked on it, right? So just to make sure we're all on the same page there. So that's what I'm talking about. Now this guy doesn't exist. So when I'm gonna click on him, the robot, the FX robot is gonna throw an FX robot exception. So I'm just catching that, showing you that these are not just magic strings that all exist they have to be in this in this case in this context that i'm using in my examples the fx id okay so first test is really well i mean the second test is really ensure selecting a mission in the list displays the overview on the right okay so i'm going to be using in this case uh the text that shows up as a list item 
in the list, Skylab. So this is the third option, right? You can use the FX ID, you can use a CSS selector, or you can use the actual text in the component itself. So in this case, I'm using Skylab. So I'm basically going to click on that uh, Skylab item. And then for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm going to sleep for a second. I obviously never do this in a test, okay? But I just want to slow it down a bit so you guys can see what's going on. And then I'm going to use the test uh, FX verify that. So you can take a look at the uh, static import over there. So what this will do is in this case here, I'm going to be passing in the FX ID of the um, text area. And over here is actually a Lambda expression. It's a predicate that gets translated to a node matcher. Okay, internally. And again, whenever you hear the term matcher in test effects, in the end, it's really a Hamcrest matcher that they're using. And I know that the text area is of type text area, obviously. So in, internally, this verify that is actually going to be translating this into a node. It's going to be using the node query API to figure that out. And then by the time it, 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 it translates this into a, um, a Hamcrest uh, matcher, really, a node uh, matcher, then it'll know its type. So this is how I'm able to um, specify text area here. I'm going to go get the text from the text area and I'm going to make sure that it contains, well, not make sure here, but here I'm going to verify that this predicate is true, right? So the text contains the NASA mission. So the NASA mission is Skylab. So like I said, I'm just testing a keyword here. I'm not testing the whole text in this specific case. So this should pass if everything goes good. The next test here, I want to ensure the missions list is populated. So I got those three missions. I just want to make sure that they're there. Again, I'm using the verify that from test effects, using the FX ID of the list view, and I'm using a node matchers class that comes from test effects. It basically has some pre-built um, <clears throat> matchers in there. All right, so you can have anything from is null, is visible, is enabled, is disabled. So these are kind of pre-built Hamcrest matchers that you can use in this case. This is not actually you know, doing anything um, useful in this example, but I just wanted to showcase that it's there. So they're probably gonna add more uh, or less, or I don't know exactly what's gonna go on with this class uh, for the beta version, but you know, for sure the is not null is gonna be there. And then we're gonna click on that list view ID. Okay, so in this case, I'm not just clicking on a label, I'm clicking on the component itself. And I'm using my custom find method in the abstract class to go find that uh, by ID, I get the node back. So when I get the node back, it's a type list view. And then I want to do an assert on it and make sure that that list view has three items in there. So because I'm going to be using down here a JUnit assert, I wanted to showcase, um, or any assert really for that matter, a wait for async utilities class and when that one does, and again, if we go take a look at uh, the import statement, you see it's from testfx, that it'll actually wait for all the events in the GUI to be flushed out of the queue so that you can assert what you want to assert. Because what can happen is there can be some events like mouse events or key events that get stuck in there, haven't been flushed out yet. And so your assert kind of asserts something before that um, event has happened. It's kind of like a race condition. So you're just waiting for all the events to get flushed out. And then in this case, I'm just making sure that the uh, number of items in that list is equal to three. All right. Over here, the last test I want to do is ensure that the logger tab gets the log message when you click on a mission. All right. So again, we're clicking here on the Apollo text and the item. And here I want to showcase move to. So move to, again, these are all from the FX robot is not a uh, click on, it's different. It just moves the mouse. So I'm moving the mouse to the log tab via FX ID here. I'm purposely sleeping for the demo a uh, second just so you can see that. And then I'm clicking on it. And then when I click on it, it should contain the text from the Apollo that I clicked, right? Like I showed you in the demo before. So over here, I'm using the FX ID. I, I decided not to use a string constant here just so we don't have to flip up and down. And that one is made up of a text area and it should be equal to this string, right? So I get the text. Once I get the text, I make sure it contains this string over here and that should pass as well. So let's take a look. I'm gonna clean and build this thing and that'll trigger uh, these uh, four tests that I've run. Right? The first one just being the bogus, uh, 
exception one, right? So I have same clicking the tabs and updating and everything seems to be pretty good over here. If I take a look at the test results, well, I would have to go window test results for that, right? Let me go to navigator, prof IDE tools, test results. I should have had that ready. No, I didn't do it, but well, let's do it again. Let's run it one more time. It was so interesting. Well, you could see it in the console that it passed, right? It's just that it's nice to get that, uh, that green bar. So you can see this takes a little bit of time to run and this is just a couple of tests, right? So this is where uh, the headless mode is really going to uh, shine over here. Now, for whatever reason, now all of a sudden it's, it's, it's not showing up uh, in terms of the nice green bar, but you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can see here that test run was four, failure zero. For whatever reason, that means is uh, being cranky with me. So that's how you go ahead and you um, use TestFX for, in this case, with your JavaFX application. In my case, also using Spring. So, it's, you know, in the background, it's getting all those uh, services and everything like that. It's kind of like an end-to-end -end functional test is what's going on right here. Okay. So in terms of follow-up questions, definitely, you know, how do you run this in a continuous uh, integration environment, aka, you know, headless mode? I'm definitely going to get into that in another tutorial. And how about multiple screens, right? What if you had like a login screen and that login screen, when you successfully log in, goes to another screen? Uh, what if it doesn't? And so, you know, there's a little bit more work to do in that case. And I will showcase that in another tutorial. But for the purposes of just showcasing this introduction on TestFX4, I think that will be enough. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and until next time.